Hey, Vlad here, DevInsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous two videos, we talked about packages, traits, and self-types. And today we're gonna make a case study. We're gonna create a simple to-do app, but we're gonna engineer the shit out of it. The idea is to make it appear really, really gigantic so that you can see the clear benefits and the trade-offs of the cake pattern. I'm not really sure how fast we'll get there because this video might get really long. And in case it does, I might split it into two parts. The first part is gonna be the entire application using packages. And in the second one, we're gonna use traits and thus make use of the uh, cake pattern. Or, you know, if it gets really, really long, then I might split it into uh, even more smaller videos. Enough talking, let's get started. <laughs> As always, we're in the Ubuntu virtual machine and we have Sublime on the left and the regular terminal on the right, which runs SBT, which runs our code every time we save the file. But this time we're actually gonna ignore all of that. So we're going to create a completely new project from, from scratch. So I'm just gonna uh, right click over here. I'm gonna say open containing folder. I'm gonna go back to dev where we have the whole Scala playlist. I'm going to create an entire new folder. I'm gonna call it to do, and I'm going to open it with Sublime. Can I do that here? I can, all right, awesome. So I can close this one now. I can close the old Sublime. I can uh, take this Sublime, put it on the left. And in fact, we're also gonna um, not use this regular terminal. Uh, let me quit it. So what I wanna have is I wanna have Sublime in full screen. Uh, what is jump like that? Full screen like that. And I have a terminal, if I press F12, uh, it's called Quake. it's coming up from the top. And uh, I can close it with F12. So I, can, I will occasionally click the button, it will come up, I can type I'll click again and we're gonna back and uh, be back in our splat. All right, so uh, we're in the folder called to do, and the first thing that we uh, need to do is we're gonna create a folder called project. Project, and inside of project, we're gonna create a file called build.properties. We did we did a similar thing uh, in the past, but uh, it's been it's been kind of long since we since we did something like this. We since we played around with SBT, uh, so I'm just gonna type it out everything. So over here we're gonna specify the version of SBT that we're using uh, because when you install SBT, you're actually not installing SBT. You're installing the um, SBT launcher, I believe it's called, and it actually downloads the SBT version that we need. Uh, so far we have always been used uh, 0.13.6, even though right now there's a newer version out of um, out. Um, but I don't want to switch things up. All right, so um, we're done with the build properties. Uh, the other one that we're going to create is the actual build file, build.spt. You can call it however you want. It just has to have the ending of .spt. All right, um, what is it doing? All right, there we go. So in our build file, uh, we're going again, we're going to simulate an entirely, uh, you know, a really gigantic project. So um, as always, we're going to have a version and uh, the version is going to be 0 0.01 and we're going to specify the organization uh, i'm going to upload the whole thing to github and i'm going to leave the link down in the description dev inside you right um scala version in this build equals 212.4 i believe as of right now uh 212.6 is already out uh but we don't need it um triggered message in this build equals watched watched clear when trigger in case you don't remember what this one does is if we use continuous compilation then it will clear the screen uh, every time it triggers right okay so we're gonna have a multi build so we're gonna have actually um uh, four or five, I don't really remember, uh, projects inside of this SPT project so SPT will manage five projects for us and um for this, we're going to define a few aliases uh, to make it easier to jump between projects. So every time I, t uh, I type in uh, root, I wanted to switch to the project called to do, which is our main uh, main project, right? The whole project is, is, is called to do, right? Because we're writing a to do app. And we're going to add another one, add command alias. Every time I type CD, which is stands for switch directory, a change directory, uh, I wanted to do project because this is how you switch projects, right? You say project to do. I want to be able to say CD to do or CD some other project. And also just to understand in, in which project we are, I want to override the shell prompt, right? Um, so it looks kind of fancy. Uh, it's basically just a lambda. Uh, you don't have to remember the exact syntax, right? You can just copy paste it and um, uh, your, your prompt is going to look the same. So it's calling just this, fun uh, this function fancy prompt, fancy prompt, uh, which takes in the project name, 
project name, which is a string, and it just modifies it a little bit, right? So uh, we're gonna use string interpolation over here. We're gonna start with an empty line. Over here, we're gonna type in uh, info so that it looks like it's coming from SPT. We're gonna say welcome to the and I'm gonna make it cyan, right? So I'm gonna call a function called cyan uh, that I'm gonna write in a few seconds. And I'm gonna say project, right? And then in the next line, we're gonna say SPT and this um, arrow to the right, I guess, uh, or grade assign, however you wanna call it. And we're gonna strip all the margins, right? So now we just wanna implement the function called cyan. It takes in the project name as before with a string just modifies the string a little bit. And we did something like this already in the past. Uh, so uh, we can do console.sign, I believe, uh, because SBT defines its own um, uh, file called uh, console. It's an ob object called console, so we have to be more specific. We have to say scala.console.sign. In fact, we're gonna play a lot with colors today uh, in this video. Um, so we're gonna be typing things like this all the time. All right, so, and we wanna reset it. All right, so that should be fine now. So, uh, now let's define all our projects. Uh, the first one is going to be called entities. Uh, entities are going to be simple data structures, right? So we're gonna have the to-do data structure. And um, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm using an architectural style called the uh, the clean architecture, at least my version of it. And we're gonna have a video about that um, where you're gonna see, you know, why am I splitting it into uh, exactly these, pro these um, sub projects. Um, if you want to know why I'm explain why I'm splitting this into projects at all is as I as I said in the beginning just so that we can see uh, the the benefits of the cake pattern because we need something really really big so I'm gonna make it look really really big okay um, all of this is completely unnecessary if you're writing a simple to do app and uh, also I want to you know we're gonna have layers of sub projects so uh, I'm gonna call them uh, in such a way so that uh, Sublime orders them um, the way I want to right so I'm gonna call um, the directories, I'm going to call it one hyphen entities instead of just entities uh, so that, you know, when I finish with my layer so that they're going to be here and here and here and here so that they are, they have the, the, the exact order as I want them, right? And we just need to add the settings for the shell prompt, shell prompt, prompt, right? Like this. And over here, uh, then comes in and it's basically exactly the same thing, right? So I can copy it from here. I don't know if a way to uh, to later propagate to all the sub projects. So in every sub project, we're gonna have to do this, right? So now I'm just gonna copy that, right? And I'm gonna leave it copied so that I can paste it multiple times. Whoops, I'm sorry for that. All right, so move it like this. Okay, so um, this is going to be the core of our application, right? So we're just gonna call it core, and the file, the the, the folder is gonna be called application hyphen core. Uh, just so that it's even you know a bit a bit more clear, right? So uh, let me go down, paste it again. Why does it paste it like this? Okay, there we go. That's that's better. All right. So the next one is going to be persistence. Is how we're gonna store the uh, the to dos persistence, right? And I'm gonna call it. You know, we're just gonna store it in memory. Right? So I'm gonna call it persistence in memory, right? And this is going to be on the layer three. Right, so let's go down. We're gonna have another thing on the layer three, like this. All right, this this time I did it right. Uh, it's going to be delivery, delivery, like this. Uh, in fact, let me actually swap them, like this. Right. So it's going to be also on the layer three, and it's going to be called delivery. Uh, hyphen terminal, right? Because we we're gonna interact with our application through the terminal and we're going to save everything um, just in memory. So every time we restart the application, uh, it will forget all of our changes, okay? And the last one is going to be the dependency injection, basically, uh, right? So it's going to be called main, main, and this is on the layer four, main, like this. And we're basically that. So now the, the last thing that we need to do is we need to declare dependencies between them. And uh, as I already mentioned, you know, everything is layered. So over here, the core is going to, to depend on the entities, right? The delivery is going to depend on the core and the same as persistence. This is exactly why they're on the same level, uh, on the same layer, or, you know, in layer three, 
right? And the main is going to depend on, on basically everything, right? Um, so we're going to say depends on delivery and it's also going to depend on persistence, right? So if I did it right, then if I go to dev to do, if I launch SPT, if I did it right, if I don't have any um, compilation um, issues in, in, my, in my build file, and then SPT will create those those folders for me, right? Let's see. Oh, it seems like it's fine. Okay, so see, it created all of these folders for me. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, three, four. Okay. So um, over here, we, you can see our fancy prompt. Welcome to the to do project. Uh, so if we type in projects, we we see all of our projects. So now we can say project core, or we can say CD core, right? And we, if we type in root, we should be back in our to do project. Okay, uh, if I press Control L, then it will just remove uh, remove everything, right? So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to open all of them, even though there's nothing inside. I'm going to go in each and every one of them, and I'm going to create a folder. Sublime allows me to create um, child uh, folders, so I can do source main Scala, and I'm actually going to uh, let's also create uh, packages. Right, because we're going to create, you know, the, the first version that we're creating is going to be uh, in, in folder packages and it's going to be in the package called packages. And the one with the cake pattern is going to be in the package called traits. All right, so I'm just going to copy that before I before I press enter. Now I press enter. So now we see source, main, Scala, packages. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. New folder, paste, enter. New folder, paste, enter new folder, paste, enter, new folder, paste, enter. And that was the last one, right? So if I open all of them, right, like this, like this, like this, like this, there we go. Now they're all opened. The, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to close the build file because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to install a plugin for Sublime Text called Origami. And uh, what Origami allows me to do is it allows me to uh, split my Sublime window into as many panes as I want to. Um, it's still being installed. Oh, okay, I think I think right now right now it finished installing. So um, it, so it allows me to do, uh, for example, if I if I create a file called um, over here, I'm gonna create a file, and the first one that we're going to create is going to be called entities, entities dot Scala. Right? There's nothing inside of it yet, but what origami allows me to do is I can press Control K and then I press down and it will create another pane for me. Now we see some rendering issues, but if I click here, we actually see this is a different pane. And I can just keep going like this. Over here, I can say Control K and then go down. And then Control OK and I go down. So now we have four layers, right? They have different sizes. Uh, what I can also do is if I press Control Shift P, I type in settings and I go into preferences settings. I see all of my settings. Let me maximize that. Uh, on my right are the user settings. If I go down, I can actually um, uh, specify uh, one of the settings for origami. And this setting is going to be, it's going to be called like this. It's going to say origami underscore auto zoom on focus. And I can specify how, how much uh, in percentage, right? So yeah, this is this is seventy five percent, right? So uh, if I did it right, if I close this, and every time I I click into the pane, it will uh, use seventy five percent of the screen. So if I click over here, uh, it it looks like this now, right? So uh, sometimes we're gonna have some rendering issues, but basically every time it's just gonna uh, do this, right? So we have all of our layers. So we're gonna have our entities here. We're gonna have our application core here. We're gonna have the um, persistence and the delivery over here. And we're gonna have our main over here. So uh, now let's start actually writing some code. All right, so um, as I already mentioned, everything that we do will be in inside of the uh, package called packages, right? So um, we can click over here. We can say package, packages, right? So uh, we're gonna have our to do, right? This is this is the entities is where where our data is going to live in, right? So we're gonna have a silt trait called to do. Uh, we're gonna have a case object to do, and inside of it, we're going to implement um, the, the the versions of our to do. So we're gonna have only only two versions. The the first one is going to represent just the data of the to do, right? So we're gonna have a final case class data, and our to do will contain the description. 
and the deadline. And for the deadline, we're going to use the local date time, uh, which comes from Java, which comes from over here. Import Java dot time dot local date time like this. So uh, we're going to have the data and we're going to have the actual to do, right? So um, the actual to do is going to be data uh, with the ID, right? So the persistence layer will, you know, once we save it to the, you know, our in-memory database is going to assign an ID to it. So we're going to have a final case class. I'm going to call it existing, right? And we're going to have an ID, uh, which is going to be a string. Remember that we're in the entities package, and uh, all we need from ID is uh, to be able to be allowed to to compare it, right? So we, we need the ID to be to, to have this notion of identity. We don't really care about which which type it is, right? It could be absolutely anything, right? Only in the persistence layer uh, will will the persistence layer convert it into something that it actually needs. So, for example, if we were using an SQL database, it would convert it to an integer. If we were using, for example, uh, MongoDB, uh, which is a no SQL database, um, they they use object IDs for um, for the IDs, right? So this is um, the response of the persistence, persistence layer, right? So over here, we're just going to use simple strings. And we could do something like this. We could say description string deadline uh, local de date time, but we actually already have data. So what I chose to do, which is, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not really necessary. Uh, we can just use the data that we just defined over there, right? And both of these, they are going to extend to do, right? This is a simple uh, algebraic data type. So uh, by now, I want to see if it compiles. So let's go um, into SPT and let's see in uh, which project we are. Uh, we are in the project to do. So this is the, the whole project. So already over here, we can do compile like this and it will compile everything like this, right? So it does an update real quick. All right. So it says uh, Java time local date time is not a member. It's because I spelled the D. The D should be a capital like this. There we go. All right. Okay. So now it compiles. Let's continue. So uh, I want I want to I want to go layer by layer. I want to finish this layer before we before we move on to to the next one. Right. So uh, for the data, what what I want to have is uh, we're gonna have we're gonna use immutable data structures, right? So uh, eventually in our to do app, we're gonna be able to to take it to do and be able to update it, right? We want to be able to change the description. Uh, but over here, we're actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new data structure instead. So uh, these are not variables, right? Uh, none of them. Uh, as we learned in the video about uh, case classes, uh, the, the case classes, they have a handy method called uh, to do, uh, sorry, <laughs> called to do, uh, a handy method called um, copy. So uh, what we can do is we can uh, provide some a convenience method uh, that will just call this this copy method, right? So we're just going to have a method called with updated description, right? And it's going to take in the new description, new description, which is a string, and it will return an instance of data. Right? So it's going to basically create another data. And it's going to do that by just saying copy uh, description equals new description and this should compile let me see yeah it does so uh, now I can just copy that go down here paste it and I can replace description with uh, in fact in this case I can do this deadline all right and the type of the deadline is local date Okay, so um, for this one, we're going to have a, a similar thing. But before we do that, let's actually have convenience method to retrieve the description and the deadline out of the data, right? So we're just going to have say description, which is a string equals data dot description. And over here, we're going to say date, um, deadline, deadline, which is a local date time equals data dot deadline. It's just for, for convenience, right? So we, so, so we don't have to, when we have an existing in our hand, we don't have to say dot data dot description. We can just say, we can just go directly to description, right? And what we will have over here uh, is going to be a, a very similar thing. So we're going to also have uh, updated with description, I'm sorry, with updated description, description, right? It's going to take in the new description string data. And what it will do, it will copy, uh, sorry, in this case, we want to return an existing, right? So over here, we're going to say copy, and we're going to say data equals data dot with updated description. And we're going to pass it the new description. And I'm not sure why sublime autocompleted deadline. Oh, it's, no, should have taken this one. I'm not sure. 
All right, new description. Okay, so this should compile. Yep, and we're gonna do the same thing for the deadline over here. Right, over here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Deadline, deadline, come on. New deadline. All right. Um, what does it say? Value was updated deadline is not a member of packages to do dot data. How did this happen? This is a this is an interesting typo. It's only here and only here. Let's see. All right, string. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to take, change this one. Local date time. Remove the cursor. All right, so now it compiles. That's kind of cool. All right, so but now if you look at them, uh, they they all have exactly the same members. They have description deadline with updated description and with updated deadline. So let's define them over here then. If we can, why not? So we're gonna have the. In fact, let me just do this. Uh, duplicate this. Bring it up like that. Uh, we're also gonna have deadline like this. Every time you're defining something in a trait, uh, you know, prefer to use. Um, Defs instead of anything else. Uh, you're just gonna have uh, you know less issues with uh, with um, with initialization, right? So uh, the next one is we're gonna have this this one. We're actually gonna gonna run into a few problems with this one because over here um, we we have to distinguish which, which type we want to return. So for now we're just gonna say to do, uh, but in fact we're gonna we're gonna have to fix it in a few seconds, right? Uh, duplicate this one, bring it up like that, okay. And let's say to do All right like this. Uh, let me save that. And now over here, every time we say def, uh, we don't have to do this, but um, I prefer to say override so that I can clearly see uh, what I'm overriding and what I'm not overriding. All right. So if you if you try to compile this, it's actually not going to compile because over here we were returning the to do, and over here we're returning data, and over here we're returning existing. I'm actually not sure. Oh no, it, it actually does compile. The thing is that uh, later in the code, uh, whenever we're going to have a to do in our hands, and if, if we don't know at this point if it's actually data or if it's existing, then um, you know we're going to lose a little bit of convenience. And I was actually having a hard time deciding if I should include this uh, in this video or not, uh, because what I'm going to do next is going to be uh, something really, really advanced and we haven't talked about it yet. Um, and uh, then I had to remember if a friend of mine, uh, when, when I was in the in, uh, in university, when I was doing my bachelor's, it was actually one of the first semesters and I had to, to make a presentation. And um, we had a guy there who already, you know, he was already also in his first semester. In fact, no, I believe I was in the second semester and he was below me, but he already had like five years of experience. Um, so uh, I asked him for help. And then uh, he, he was showing me some code and I was like not understanding it like whatsoever. And I told him that, hey, like if, if I don't understand it and I'm making this presentation, like how are they gonna understand it? And then he said, well, you just take your time to understand it and uh, they will because you know, you, you, want to, you want to encourage them. He said, you want to encourage them. And by that time I didn't understand this. Uh, I thought, you know, I, I'm gonna have to make it as simple as possible so that they understand it. Uh, but he actually convinced me to, uh, to sometimes to encourage people to, um, to understand it. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is gonna be something uh, really advanced. It's called um, F bounded polymorphism. So if you wanna learn more about it, you can, you can look it up. So every time we, we define a type uh, inside of a, of, a, of a trait, for example, right over here. So if we had a type uh, alias, I'm gonna call it this type, right? Um, in fact, I'm gonna call it uh, protected, protected. Uh, what happens is that it, it's not actually uh, just an alias. It becomes actually a member of the trait to do. The same as description is a member of to do, the same as deadline is a member of to do. This type is also a member of to do. And over here, we have to specif specify it. So in this case, it's not going to be just a type. We're also going to put a constraint on this type. We're going to say, okay, this type has to be a subtype of to do. And this sort of looks like an infinite loop. This is what the F bounded polymorphism is all about. Uh, if this go, if this is like too far for you, just, just, you know, just, just bear with me for a second. You don't need to understand it completely, completely. Um, why I'm, why am I doing this is uh, I'm going to show it to you a bit later when we're going to go into the application core, there will be one tiny part uh, where we're going to have some code duplication. And because of this, we're going to be able to, to remove this code duplication. This is the only reason. And also I want to encourage you to, um, to not only to, to learn from me because like as, as of right now, I haven't explained this concept. Um, but also, you know, to look up things, uh, yourself, right? So we have this type and what it gives us, it, it gives us the ability to, to go over here and to actually override this type, the same as we would override any other member, right? And we want to keep it protected. 
this type and in this case it's going to be data and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to bring it down to existing and in this time uh, this case it's going to be existing right okay and now what I want to do is over here and with updated description I want to return this type over here right so uh, I believe we're actually done and just for just for readability reasons um, it says it has uh, incompatible type okay it's actually not for readability reasons it's actually I have to use it over here like this and like this over here now it should be fine whoops I did something wrong let's see uh, oh yeah that should be an equal sign over here uh, because I'm, I'm just I'm just overriding it like any other member right so I'm just gonna say equals data equals existing and now it should be fine all right uh, let me t let, let, let's take a look at this whole thing okay so uh, we have a trait to do it has uh, four you know regular simple members uh, description deadline and with updated description on with updated deadline these two they create another instance of the data structure that we're currently on so if we're do doing it on data then it will, will get data not just to do we'll get data it will be more specific and if we do it on existing we will get existing back okay and this works because of this type right so we gotta have uh, and then the member of to do, we're just going to call this type. These two are going to override it the same as they overwritten that they have overwritten the other members. In fact, maybe maybe let me put it on the next line just so that it looks exactly like the other members, right? And uh, this is what's being returned. This type, this type. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm almost one hundred percent sure that I can use data here. It should be exactly the same. Yeah, it should be exactly the same. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it at uh, you know this time so that it so that it looks like exactly this one. Okay. So now we have our to-dos. We can update them. We can um, you know we we, we kind of like you know we can create them right because we have a constructor so we can create an existing one if we give it an ID and the data. I'm not gonna showcase this because I don't want to waste your time. This, this this video is gonna be uh, too long anyway. So by now we're completely done with this layer. So we have entities. We have our trait. We have two versions of it. We have data and we have existing. Okay, so the next layer that we're going to work on is going to be over here. This is going to be our application core. So we're going to go to packages and we're going to create a file. And the first one that we're going to create, uh, we're going to have three of them actually here. It's going to be called application boundary, application boundary, uh, which is going to be a simple trait that describes all the methods that we can call on our application core, right? So uh, everything is going to be in package packages, right? I'm going to have a trait called application boundary, right? This has nothing to do with the cake pattern yet, nothing uh, nothing to do with self type. This is a, like a regular trait, and we're going to use it for regular purposes. So, a to do app is a regular CRUD app. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. So, we're going to have our create methods over here. I'm going to use a comment. I'm going to have a method called create one. And um, let me make this one a little bit bigger, like this. Okay. So, we're going to have a method called create one. We're going to give it some data, right? To do dot data and it will save it in the database and it probably you know and it will con basically it will convert data into existing right the next one we're gonna have is create many and we're not even gonna use all of them right but we're gonna define and we're gonna implement all of them right so this one gets a, uh, a bunch of uh, datas and it converts them into a bunch of existings right uh, the next methods that we're gonna have are going to be for read uh, this is going to be a read one by ID. Uh, we're going to give it the ID of string and it might find it or it might not find it in the database, right? And again, for I say database all the time, but we're going to use just an in-memory data structure, okay? So then we're going to have read many uh, by ID, IDs, set of string, and it gives us back the ones that have found existing. In fact, I should probably, uh, from time to time, uh, see if it compiles. All right, it compiles. All right, so um, I'm going to have another one called read many by partial description. So I'm going to give it a partial description, So, which is basically a part of a description. And we're going to see if it can find something existing, right, like this. And we're also going to have a method for reading everything to do that existing. Right, um, right. Okay. So the next one are going to be for an update. You're gonna have update one, existing, 
Um, this is also why uh, why I chose to do it in such a way, right? Because we have two different uh, types. I can make sure that we can't update one that doesn't exist yet, right? So we can only uh, update the one that, that exists, right? And we're gonna have update many to do set up to do dot existing to do whoops to do dot existing, right? And the last ones that we're gonna have is delete. So we're gonna have delete one to do to do existing and I'm gonna upload the whole thing to github so that you can uh, look at it at your own pace and also uh, you can um, complete it right so for example um, you know mm, uh, for example, there should be a, a function to um, you know to snooze a to do right um, but actually you know uh, an update um, you know if we update many and we update the deadline that maybe it's basically something like like, like snoozing I don't know um, in any case uh, let me finish this so we're gonna have delete many. I'm gonna give it a bunch of existing to dos, right? Um, they all gonna side effect like a boss, right? And delete all, right? So I believe this is this is our entire application. All right. So um, as I said, I want to build this application layer by layer. Uh, but what I wanna 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 do already is I wanna go over here. Right, and I'm gonna go to delivery, and I'm gonna create a file over there. So I'm gonna jump to this layer just for just for a quick second, and um, I'm gonna call the file um, terminal user interface, user interface, right? Dot dot Scala. Okay. So uh, all I want to have over here, package packages, is I want to have a class called terminal user interface <laughs> terminal user interface I mean console okay and uh, it's gonna use the application boundary application boundary the one that we just created this is why I'm here I just want to show you like how how the application is going to be assembled together right so this is why we're creating it so we're gonna have a terminal user interface and it's gonna get the boundary and um, it's also gonna take a pattern of how to display the um, how to display the dates right uh, so it's gonna come from Java dot time dot format dot date time formatter right like this let's see if it compiles it should compile right okay so let's let's go back to our um, to our application layer and the next file that we're going to create is it's going to be called uh, so it's not going to be the application core the one that implements the application boundary uh, it's going to be the uh, another one it's going to be called uh, persistence gateway. And the reason why I'm defining them in, in such an order is that um, I just want I, I want to I want things to to incrementally compile, okay? So uh, because the application core is actually going to use the persistence gateway, I want to create it first, right? Uh, so I'm not I'm not creating the implementation of the gateway first. Uh, I'm I'm creating the uh, you know it's, it's sort of like a similar boundary. It's a gateway to to the persistence layer. So everything is in, in package packages, right? And we're going to have a trait here called persistence gateway right so I'm not gonna implement it or like this right I'm just gonna leave it like this so now I can actually go go here and I can create a file called application core application core like this and let me put it over here like this okay so in the application core we're gonna have package package packages and over here we're gonna have a class called application core right and it's gonna get the persistence persistence gateway of type persistence gateway right and this whole thing is going to extend the application boundary right so it extends this and it uses this okay so it should compile now oh it doesn't oh yeah so it doesn't compile because uh, we we have to implement all of these methods um, in fact let me let me copy all of them why not I'm just gonna copy them I'm gonna put them over here inside of this, right? Like that, and we're gonna implement them later. Uh, let me remove this, like that, and we don't need the packages dot anywhere, like that. All of them are gone. Okay, so let's also do this and that. Whoops. Come on, I wanted to do this, right? Like this, like that. Also, let's have the comments. Create, delete, read, update, and because I want this whole thing to spell CRUD, I want to bring it down. 
like this. Okay, so um, now it should compile, I believe. Yeah, it compiles. Okay, so let's let's um, let's do the persistence layer um, first. Um, it's, it's not actually a layer. So um, and this is just a trade. So we're gonna we're gonna define over here what what um, operations a persistence uh, layer, persistence gateway should have. So we're gonna have a create and update and just one operation. We're gonna have a write many. I'm gonna give it a bunch of to dos. Right? It could be already existing ones or uh, not existing ones. And uh, it's going to uh, give us back the existing ones. So we're gonna, uh, you know, we're not gonna have validation over here. We're gonna pretend that uh, that our writes will always succeed. Uh, usually, you should uh, also make sure that you know what if your database is down, for example, right? So um, this is all we need for creating and updating one method. Uh, for reading, we're gonna have read many by ID IDs. I think they probably have. Um, do they look the same? Yeah, I believe I believe they do. Okay, so we can take these three, right? And the persistence layer is gonna have them as well, right? Like this: read all, read many by ID, read many by partial description. Um, we don't need read one uh, because we can use um, read all for that, right? Like this. But you know, in in your application, if if you're writing for it for yourself, you can define it a little bit differently. Okay, and the last ones are deletions. Okay, so delete many to dos set off to do dot existing. Turn the unit, and we're gonna have delete all return the unit. All right, so that compiles now. Cool. Okay, so now what we can do is we can implement the application core, uh, a completely functional application core, even though we don't have the implementation of the, of the database. Okay, so let's start with create one. So uh, create one, um, why does it sort of like this? One many, yeah, one many. I, wa I want them to be, whoops, um, sorry. I want them to be sorted in exactly the same one. So we have create one, create many, um, one many by ID and then partial. I am really not sure why when I wanna, you know, copy paste them from the console, why it, uh, change all the order because I want to be able to click back and forth and it shouldn't change, right? Uh, one many all, uh, one many all. Okay, so now if I click back and forth, it should be exactly the same. All right, so uh, this one is still question marks. Okay, so let's create one and uh, because it's a side effect method, I'm always going to try to, um, you know, to show it as much as possible, which is why I'm using the curly braces, even though I already know that uh, this function is gonna is gonna have only one uh, one statement, right? So create one. It's just gonna call create many, and it will just convert this to do into a set so that it compiles, right? And then it's just gonna take the first one that comes back, right? Because create many uh, returns a set, and because again our writes will always succeed. I don't have to have any any validation logic over here, right? Because usually uh, the the dot had member it it throws an exception if the set is empty, but in our case the set will never be empty because um, our, our writes will always succeed, right? So now let's um, implement uh, create many and uh, create many will use a function called uh, write many, um, write many that we're going to define ourselves over here. So this this one is going to be um, uh, sort of a bit of like a, a bit complicated uh, because of this f bounded polymorphism. In fact, in fact, this is the one that um, uh, this is the reason uh, why I use it. So it's going to look like this. It's going to um, say write many, right? Um, it's going to get some to dos, to dos, right? Set off to do, right? Any kind of to do. Uh, we're going to we're going to change the signature a bit later, right? And it all it will produce the existing ones, right? So the idea is that you can give it an existing one and it will update it. And if you give it a, just data, then it will create it, right? So what it will do is it will go to the persistence gateway finally, right? To this one. This is why it's here, persistence gateway, and it will call the write many function, right? Uh, if you go to the persistence layer, uh, it's gonna call this function, which is the only the only way to write anything into the database, right? So it's gonna call write many, and write many um, uh, as its argument gets a bunch of to dos, right? Uh, but I'm going to use curly braces to pass it this one argument uh, because what I want to hear is uh, what I want to do here. So this is a this is a CRUD application, which means that in the application layer, there's actually not that much logic. Usually, the logic would be, uh, you know, does it already exist or 
you know, um, is something valid, you know, like, for example, is a deadline in the past, for example, things like this. So at least over here, I'm going to make sure that the description is trimmed, right? So trimmed means that there are no spaces in the beginning and in the end of it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map through all of the to do's. And every time I have a to do in my hand over here, right, I want to say to do dot with updated description. Right, so I want to update the description long before it reaches the persistence layer, uh, with uh, whatever the description currently is. So whatever whatever our users uh, you know typed in, right, trimmed. Right, so trim. Uh, this is a, a method that you can call on string, and it will just remove the white spaces in the beginning and in the end. Uh, let's see if it compiles because it might not. Yeah, it might not. So um, the thing is that uh, it says. A type mismatch. So it found a uh, a set of data, right? But it required um, to do, right? So the thing is that um, over here with updated description, it, it returns you know on, on only one of them, right? So um, it, it returns either the data or the or the existing ones. And in this case, it doesn't know it doesn't know which which one it will be. So um, this this whole thing is a set, and the set is invariant. And we're going to talk about this um, in depth in some in some other videos. Uh, but basically. Uh, what we need to do is we need to pass in over here not just a to do, but we need to know exactly which to do it is. So what we're gonna have over here is, uh, is going to be a constraint. We're gonna say, okay, this is for some type that extends to do, right? And we're gonna have a set of t instead, right? So uh, over here now we know exactly which one it is, right? And this should compile now. In a second, we're going to implement the update uh, menu function, and you will see that the code for it would, would look exactly the same. And because I didn't want to have this duplication, in fact, I struggled. If, should I just keep this duplication or should I remove it but use a very uh, advanced concept? And I decided to use the advanced concept, as I already mentioned, right? Um, because because we did it, we, we will not have this duplication. But we're going to get there in, in just a few seconds, OK? So uh, let's just continue. Let's do the read one. Or in fact, you know, uh, let's let's actually go do it now. Let's do, let's do the update one. So the update one is going to look pretty much exactly the same as create one. In fact, I can copy paste it, right? But instead of, uh, instead of calling uh, create mini, uh, obviously, it's going to call update mini, right? This one, OK? And update mini is going to look exactly the same as create mini. Right, so it's just going to say write many, write many to dos, right, like this. And this is this is why I have this this advanced thing so that I don't have to uh, so that I don't have to write this code twice. This is the only reason why we need it. If you don't want to have it, if you just want to remove this complexity, feel free to do so, and then you will have a teeny tiny bit of code duplication. Okay. All right. So let's do the read one by ID. Um, which is going to do, uh, they, they're all going to look very, very similar, right? So uh, it's going to say read many by ID, right? It's going to convert the ID into a set. And then it's just going to do, instead of had, uh, it's going to say had option, right? Because we need to produce an option. So this is the, um, a function that is implemented on, on, on the set. And uh, I know that we already, we, we also didn't have um, videos about collections yet, but um, I'm sort of introducing you slowly to them, right? So uh, had option is just yet another uh, function on, 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 on sets and, and on, uh, in fact, on all other collections, right? So that compiles. So that uh, let's see how read many by ID looks like. And by the way, this is also why they are ordered like this, right? So they can, you can read them sort of top to bottom, right? You can read this one and this one. It's down there and then so on and so on and so on. Okay. So read many by ID is actually going to go to the persistence gateway. And notice that these ones they don't produce a side effect, right? So uh, therefore, um, I'm not going to use curly braces around them. This is not a typical convention. I just want to I just want to um, you know mark the side effects as as much as I can, okay? Uh, because they're they're dangerous, right? So. Uh, over here, we're going to say read many uh, by ID, a method which is defined on persistence. And I'm just going to give it the uh, the IDs, right? That's it. OK. So the next one in line is this one, read uh, many by partial description. And um, we're going to do something like if partial, if partial description is empty, set.empty. There is no there is no need to, to go to the database. and um, uh, only in this case, we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing, read many by uh, partial description, partial description dot 
trim, right? So this is going to come from from the user input, and you know, hopefully, you know, the the the, um, the user interface layer is going to handle it for us. But if it doesn't, we we always want to trim. Like the, the this trimming thing is basically one of those things that. Um, it's like a, it's like a one on one of user interfaces. Like every time you get some user input, you know, just always trim it. Uh, on on very rare occasions, you don't need to trim it. Uh, let's see if it compiles before we go to the next one. Yeah, it does. Okay, so now we have the read all. It's going to be the last one, and read all is just going to call the read all on the persistence uh, gateway. Okay, so now it compiles, and our application core is done. So basically, our application is done. I mean, we can't deliver it to our users, right? Um, but uh, the, the 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 core of the application is already done. It is done over here. Oh, we forgot to delete. Oh, happens. <laughs> All right, delete one. Uh, let's go here. Uh, it's going to be a side effect. Oh, come on, like this, like this. Um, just gonna call delete many, convert it into a side. A very similar pattern as before, like this. Uh, this one side effect. All right. I'm gonna say persistence gateway delete many, I'm going to give it the to do's, and then we're going to have the delete all, it's going to be persistence gateway dot delete all. Okay, so if that compiles, and it should compile, yeah, it does compile. All right, so now we're actually done with the whole application, right? So we have the create, we have the read, we have the update, we have the delete, right? We have the boundary that exposes all of these methods, and we have the core that implements that, and it uses the persistence gateway, which is defined like this, which is something that we actually don't have yet. Let's actually implement it now, because we're done with this layer anyway. So um, let's go, in fact, I want to open all of them so that you always see them, all right? like this there we go so uh let's create a file over here in fact let me um click here first okay so um let's create a file over here i'm gonna call it in memory persistence gateway dot scala all right so it's gonna look as always packages packages and um, package package packages right like this okay so uh, this can be a class but in this case it doesn't uh, have any parameters so it's gonna be an object instead so you're gonna say in memory persistence gateway and it will extend the persistence gateway right this one over here right so and now it's not going to compile right because it's going to say hey it doesn't implement a bunch of these methods uh but i don't want to copy paste them from here i actually want to copy paste them from here because i don't want the order to be ruined yet again so i'm going to go here i'm going to put them all over here and i'm going to do an override over here even though it's uh, completely unnecessary, so every time you're you're implementing a an abstract method, you don't need to use the, the keyword override, okay? But I prefer to use it. In fact, I believe I probably have forgotten to do it over here, right? So everywhere where I say dev, uh, okay, not everywhere. This one, the other one is private. I'm gonna say override over here, and these ones as well. Dev, 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 dev. Like this, I'm gonna say override because I want I want the compiler to warn me if I did something wrong, okay? And now over here. Uh, let's see, what can we do? Uh, there is a colon in every line. Okay, let's go to the end of the line and just say equals. It's not implemented yet, like this. All right, okay, so. Um, forgot the equal sign? Did I forget the equal sign? What's, what's wrong? Um, only traits and abstract classes can have declared but undefined members. So this is usually a sign that an equals um, sign is forgotten, but I didn't forget it. There's the equal sign over there everywhere. It doesn't see my change. Oh my god, I'm so silly. I added them to the to the wrong one. Uh, I added them over here. I should have done it in the in the implementation. Man, man, man. Okay, so I wanted to do it over here. Mark all the clones. Right. Go to the end of the line. Equals. Like this. All right, so now everything, yes, <laughs> the world is, is, is fine again, okay? So, uh, as I already said, this is going to be in-memory persistence, so we're just going to have a set, I'm going to throw things into the set, I'm going to remove things things from the set, and so on. Uh, our ID is going to be an integer, so we're going we're gonna to pretend like this is an um, SQL database. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a private var uh, called next ID equals zero, right? And we're going to have private var state which is gonna keep track of all the existing to-dos, right? So, you know, just, just think about it as if it was a database, right? So, uh, write many, 
is just going to go through all the to-dos and just map them to write one like this okay and write one is going to be a private def over here write one it's just going to get one to do it's going to be a to do over here right and we're going to do to do dot existing okay over here we're going to say to do match case item to do dot data in this case we want to create one and if this is already an existing to do then we want to update one with an item like this okay and these are going to be defined here provide private def create one to do to do dot data once it's written it's going to convert it into an existing one and we're going to say over here create it equals to do dot existing so we're creating a, a, a new object right and the information uh, that it will have we're going to come from here so it needs to be an id right our ids are integers but the our entities specify that the id over here that it's a string okay so we need to convert it into a string and the data is going to come from from the to do right from like this right so we're passing in data uh, we're going to uh, assign an ID to it which is something that the persistence layer should do uh, we're going to cr create this object uh, put it into a variable called uh, created and um, now we're going to add it to the state I'm going to say state equals state plus created and next ID is going to be next ID plus one and we could also use the plus plus equal syntax um, but I'm gonna do this um, just because I know how the update one method is gonna look like okay let's do it over here update one uh, it's gonna take in a to-do so this has to be already an existing to-do and existing equals state equals so what we want to have here is we want to remove it um, from from the set first right so we're gonna filter not it's gonna remove it it's gonna remove the one that, that has exactly the same ID and this is going to be the set uh, with was 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 this to do removed and to this set uh, we're going to add this existing one right so this is basically an update so we're gonna remove it and add it again and we're gonna assign the whole thing to the state and this is why I didn't use the plus equals um, syntax over here so that um, so that you can see the the similarity right and we're just going to return it right so we're just gonna it's literally just you know just updates it by remove it first adding it again changing the entire state and now we're just going to return the entire to do right let's see if it compiles it should all right it doesn't um 20 value data is not a member of packages to do dot data oh yeah of course it's not because um i just called it to do but it basically this already is data right so we can just use to do here or we could actually rename it to data so that we're not confused i just kept using to do everywhere here it doesn't matter which one we have existing or to do so that just um so that the code uh looks kind of similar uh but now in fact I, I ran into it myself okay and next id spelled with a capital i yes all of them spelled with a capital i like this all right and we have found unit required existing um on 26. let's see over here uh why are we not returning this one we should return this one like that all right so uh similar to update one we create it we return it we update it we return it okay all right so let's see what's left uh so we have read many we have read one we have updated one all right so the reads are, are not implemented and the deletes are not implemented yet all right so let's start with the reads so um, again, we haven't we didn't have a, a, a video about collections yet, but um, basically you learn about a few members on collections. So there's one called filter because um, no, actually we're not going to need the filter over here. Uh, read all is just going to return the entire state. Read all is going to return the entire state. Okay, uh, read many by ID. This is the one that is going to need the filter, All right? So we're going to take this state and we're going to only return the ones uh, where or where where the IDs contains um, the ID of that to do right so we only uh, we only we basically filter out the to do's that are in this set of IDs that are being requested right so um, the user gives us a bunch of IDs we filter the ones that um, that are in this list right 
Okay, and uh, let's see if it compiles. Um, pop, 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 pop. Yep, it does. All right, so uh, now we have this one. We're gonna do a similar trick. We're gonna say state filter. Uh, we're gonna say description. Uh, we're gonna convert the description to lowercase. Uh, we're gonna ask it if it contains partial description to lower case like that and the application core is going to make sure that this partial description uh, is trimmed i believe it should Do -do 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 -do. yeah over here and uh the you know the, the user interface layer is going to make sure uh, yet again right so we're just adding adding um adding more safety okay so um but you, you probably you probably shouldn't do it here right because if you do it here then there is a chance that you might you might forget it in the application core you might forget it in your in your delivery uh layer and then you, you might run into some 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 weird weird issues like why why should the persistence layer make, make, make sure that something that you know a business logic is specifying um is defined any case too much talking let's let's define the delete many so the delete many is going to look like this state equals so there's also filter there, so there's filter and there's filter not so a uh, filter return uh, you know requires a function that uh takes the element and produces a boolean and filter not also takes a function that produces a boolean but it's basically the opposite boolean right so uh, in this case and the element comes in we're going to map the to do to the id because uh, you know all we care about the id i'm going to ask it does it contain the element dot id right so uh, basically only um, uh, only the ones which are not here are going to be deleted. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, other, the, way, the other way around. Uh, the ones, the ones w which are not here are going to be capped, right? So over here, uh, the, the ones which are the IDs which, which are in here will be capped. Um, over here is the, the tattoos that are not in here will be capped, right? So this is, you know, the, 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 the filter and the, the filter not, okay? And let's see if the composite should yeah it does all right so and this is the last one it's going to be the state equals set dot empty like this there we go all right so i believe let's see if we have question marks somewhere no we don't all right so i'm sorry that it doesn't fit into the whole screen like i usually prefer uh, that that you know that you see the whole code but again uh we're, we're simulating a, a gigantic project and uh, the whole thing is going to be on github and you will be able to check it out